In the last lecture, we were talking about politics and science and how in political science, we want to be able to make generalizable statements, true claims, understanding how the world is so we can predict how the world will be. And in fact, that's one of the major elements of science. Well, how do you do that? We don't want to spend forever in introduction class discussing this, but we do want to have a basic grasp of what makes science science. And the answer to that is this thing here called methodology. Methodology is the way of studying something systematically. Remember we talked about doing it in systematically through rational thought and empirical observation. Well, the way you make those observations, the way you observe the world, that glasses that you're using, that's your methodology. And that's what we want to spend some time talking about here. And they're going to include some concepts like variables, theories, and correlation. So, what is it? Let's start with evidence. Evidence can mean a lot of things in the vernacular, the common sense. But what we mean is observation, so things that we're looking at, that are used to advance a hypothesis um, or a proposition, meaning that we're looking at something about the world. We've thought carefully. Remember, again, we have some science and sound of the world who has thought carefully about some idea. And we now want to have some observations that give us evidence towards that idea. That is what evidence is fundamentally about in the context of political science, or any science for that matter. So a methodology will then therefore be the systematic way to organize that evidence in order to explain and predict. Right? So we know that we want to be scientific. So what makes it that way is this systematic organizational process. So I don't just look at the world and go, oh, look, I see lots of women. Therefore, everyone's a woman. No, that's ridiculous. Instead, we would want to take a look and have some sampling method and decide, oh, well, actually, you know, 62% of the people on campus are women. So maybe that's why I was seeing more women than men. See, that's the systematic organization. And that's the way we use evidence so that we can explain and predict like we talked about in our lecture. So what are the big areas that help us with this? Well, we need to understand variables, theories, and hypotheses. Variables are anything that can vary, right? So like temperature, power, fun stuff. A variable is something that can take on a multiplicity of values in short. And there's two big kinds that you may be familiar with. You've got independent and dependent. Independent variables are the ones that we think explain something. So maybe I think power explains why some people will talk in class or not. So power would be our independent, our explanatory variable. Our dependent variable is the thing that we're trying to understand or the thing that we're trying to explain. So our independent, or more than one, depending if we have, we have more than one, will be explaining our dependent variable. So those are variables. Now, Theories are composed of variables in concepts, meaning that I'll have a theory about how the world works. I think that students who sit near to the front of class will do better. That's a theory. And so it has a bunch of variables. So for instance, what does it mean to do better? Well, maybe my variable is grade. It could also be attendance of a number of variables that fit into that, right, into that concept, into that explanatory framework. So you can think of a theory in this sense as a story. It's a story, a scientific story, about how the world works, and it uses variables and concepts to explain via independent and dependent variables what's occurring. Our hypothesis is the thing that we predict. So on the basis of my theory, I'm predicting, I'm hypothesizing that grades will go up and attendance will get better the closer to the front of the class you sit. So my hypothesis then is the thing that we're going to be providing evidence for against through this complex methodology. Now, there are lots of methodologies running around in science and we'll be taking a look at social science methodologies 
because political science is a form of social science, which you might have even gotten taking a look at the department that this class is in. But all methodologies have some basic commonalities. They will all formulate a theory. They will carefully operationalize their terms. What do we mean by doing better? That's kind of fuzzy. We have to operationalize it, meaning to make it clear, precise, understandable, and most importantly, measurable. All methodologies will have data collection. The way we collect data, that evidence, it will have a research design, a way that we're going to look at that data. We will analyze data. How is it that we'll make yes or no claims about what's have occurred? And then finally, methodologies will have ways for interpreting the results to say, we think this is what's happening in accordance with our theory. That's the commonality to all methods. But there can be a lot of errors that can occur. Problems with the way we've gathered our data. So, for instance, maybe we think X leads to Y. Um, but really, X is just another fancy way of stating Y. I've seen this all the time. Students will say things like, I think that the gross domestic product is related to how much things are produced in a certain country. Well, you really just defined X as Y because GDP and, you know, how much you're producing in a country, that's the same thing. So you have to be careful. And in this class, we will have to be careful with the different ways that we take a look at errors and methodological errors. So how can you do better in this class? Read the case studies in the book. Be careful about concepts. Talk about what people are getting at. Think carefully about the connections and always ask for supporting evidence. And we'll talk more about this in a later episode.